Hi, this is Dave Fickinger. Thank you for purchasing your River Wind Barn camera. This video will hopefully get you up and running without the need to call in for tech support. River Wind does pride ourselves in remote in tech support for all purchases, but sometimes during December and January we get a little busy and sometimes it's not possible to do this when you call in. We need to schedule it. If you wish to try this first, and we hope you will, it will uh, walk you through some steps to first get your cameras on your phone and your computer using the internet interface which we call away. That works fine as long as you have very fast internet but if your internet is slow or laggy uh, or you pay for data you're going to definitely want to get home programmed into your phone and computer. Using away goes from your phone to your router to a server in California back to your barn. When you use home it simply goes from your phone to your router to your barn and back. It's very quick, very responsive, and high definition is very easily streamed. When you're away from home, if you've got a bad cell signal, you may be in the lower resolution mode until you get on somebody's good Wi-Fi. Or if your home internet is slow, it may lag. But for now, let's get it up on the phone. So, as long as everything's plugged in correctly, and we ask that you please read the instructions all the way through, and when you get done, read them through again. Make sure you've got everything correct. Some of the biggest problems we have, people will mix the antennas up, and they'll put the B antenna at the house and the A at the barn. The antennas are marked. A is at the house, B is for barn. The power inserter plugs for the antennas have a PoE and an LAN jack. Be sure that the network cable that comes from the antenna is plugged into the PoE side and the LAN side goes to your control unit in the barn or your router in the house. Lastly, be sure your antennas are both plugged in and then restart your DVR. If it was already running prior to the antennas, this does not have a local address from your router. Restarting it will cause a handshake and it will allow you to connect up. If you need to call in for tech support or remote in help, please read the instructions through. Download the app Eclipse Live to your phone. It'll show you how here in a moment. And download Team Viewer 10 from our website. We don't use the latest version. Read your instructions through and they'll tell you where that can be located. First off, with your instruction sheet, you received a last page that has numbers that are specific to your control unit or DVR. On those instructions you need to note line number 8 and be sure that we filled it in with your unique QR code number. That same number should be written on the outside of the DVR's box or control unit's box in an upper corner much in the area where you would put a postage stamp. There's a small square. It's located on both sides. So make sure you look at both sides, but the number should be there as well. One of the first steps you want to do is on your phone, enter the App Store or the Play Store, and download the app Eclipse Live. On the screen, I have a copy of TeamViewer mirroring my phone so you can see the steps. This is an Android phone, and the Eclipse Live symbol is on top. I believe it looks slightly different on an Apple. Download and install Eclipse Live. When you've installed Eclipse Live and you open it, you're going to usually have some first-timer information screens that you'll never see again. You have to swipe through those until you get to a screen that says Start and Local. Click on the Start button and it should take you to an Add a Device page. If you've been in the app looking around and it skips this step, it might possibly take you to a live screen. Follow your directions to get back to this Add a Device page. So no matter if you're fresh into the app or you've gone to it through the Add a Device page, it should look a lot like this. I can't replicate those screens on this phone as it's already been used. 
On this page, in the first line, you're going to enter the unique number that we identified in your instruction sheet. Put that into the top line. Manually enter it at this time. Don't worry about the, the drop-down arrow. That's for local devices, and don't worry about the minus sign. That's to scan stuff in. At this point, you don't have anything to scan. Manually enter the QR code on the top line. The second line is simply a nickname, and we call this Away for this setting. This is the setting you generally want to use when you're not at home. It will work at home, but it travels through the internet to a server in California and back to get to your barn and is much less effective than the local settings we'll talk about later. The third line is the user, and the user for this machine at this point is going to be admin. You'll later have the opportunity, if you wish, to add other users with unique passwords that you can give to friends and family, although most people find that unnecessary. They just use this for everyone. The last line is your password. And the password on this device, we want to enter 654321. Now, I've entered mine backwards because that's how this device is at this point. Once we're there, we want to click the Done button. And on your device, you probably will not see the save option or the play. It will probably say preview as this is your first time in. That's fine. Click on the preview button or the play button. The first time that you click on this, you're going to see some more informational screens. These, I believe, just have an OK button on them. Again, I can't replicate them because I've been in this machine already. So just hit OK, OK, OK until your cameras pop up on the screen. And don't worry about the way they look. I'm going to show you in a minute how to increase the resolution. Now that you see cameras, we're going to try to find the local address. There's a couple ways to do this. First, we're going to try the phone. And if you're lucky enough that your router allows the phone to search the network, it'll identify the local address. But if you are not seeing cameras at this time, if there's nothing on your screen or you got a no network connection, it's very possible the equipment is not plugged together correctly or that you didn't restart the DVR. Be sure of all the steps that you've taken. You want to be sure your antennas are outside, or if they're inside, that you're very close and possibly in a window. If your barn's metal, under no circumstance do you want that to be inside. Typically, if you're trying to run through two windows, one at the barn and one at the house, it's going to reflect the signal enough that it will not work very effectively. If all those steps are, are taken and you still cannot see it, go back, review the data, be sure you didn't have a typo. Typically, if it's a zero, we will put a slash through it. If it's an O, we will not. Make sure you have the password entered correctly, 654321. You can always re-enter it. And be sure admin on the third line is lowercase and is not capitalized. The nickname line is really irrelevant. It's not going to matter. So for those who do have video, we're going to continue on. For those who don't and you can't figure it out, give us a call. To discover the local IP address, we're going to check the phone. Some of you will be lucky enough that your phone will identify that local address. To do that, we're going to go to the top left corner and click on the little man. We're going to go to the second line and click on the server list. When I click this, it'll take me directly to the server list. When you click on server list, it's going to take you probably to a first-timer informational screen. It'll have some info. Ultimately, click OK, and it will take you to the server list. To capture the local IP address, we're going to try the phone first. Some people will be lucky enough that their, their router will allow the phone to search the network and identify the local IP address. To do that, we're going to go and click on the little man in the top left corner. 
Next, we're going to go to the second line and click on server list. Yours might be on the right. There are two different versions out there. When you click on server list, the first time is going to take you to an informational screen that all day has an OK button on it. Click the OK button and it will continue on to the server list. Your server list will be empty. Mine is not, so I'm covering it up for the moment. You want to click on the plus sign in the top right corner. This should give you an added device page, much like you had originally. On the right side of the top line of added device is a drop down arrow. Tap on that drop down arrow, it will radar scan for equipment and possibly show it up on your phone. If you see the word DVR and a bunch of IP address numbers, that's your local address. Tap on that and it will fill in the screen for you. If it does, you're going to continue to fill out that screen. You're going to, it will populate the, the top line with your local IP address. Give it a nickname of home. It probably will put a number in there. Just change that, erase that line, and put the word home. Your user is going to be admin. And your password is going to be 654321, just like before. You can click the play button, and it will take you back to your device. I'm going to just skip back. Back on the live page, you'll see your cameras. I said earlier you can put these in high definition. What you want to do is double tap on one of the cameras to make it full screen. I'll tap on the large window. Tap on it twice. It should take you to a single camera on a single window pane. If that doesn't or you're having trouble with that, you can always hit the number button. Or excuse me, the grid button on the bottom. And then choose a single screen. At that point, you can use the number pads to go back and forth between your cameras. With your camera on a single screen, you want to tap on the video window one time. You'll see four icons show up across the top of the video window. Now, they don't last very long. What you want to look for is an icon that looks like a mountain and a moon or an eyeball. There are two different versions out there. Mine's going to be the mountain and the moon. It's usually the left icon when you're on the screen. Tap it. We'll see the mountain and the moon show up. Ultimately, it's a little slow here. Come on up. Now we're going to select that. Once we select the mountain and the moon or the eyeball, it's going to take us into a definition setting page. Mine carries them all the way from low all the way to super definition. Sometimes you just see low and high, low or super. There's no rhyme or reason why, just some of the phones choose different settings. Always choose super definition. When you go into super definition, it's going to clear your cameras up quite a bit. On my screen, since I'm remoted in, it's not going to look very pleasant. Yours will get a lot clearer. At that point, if you turn your phone sideways, it should go into full screen mode, as long as your rotation is enabled on your phone. Once in full screen mode and on high resolution, you can zoom in on it by putting two fingers on it and spreading those apart, zooming in much like you would a photograph. 